Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you very much for uh, coming to this. I'm Tom Dyer. I'm a product manager in the data platforms group at InterSystems. I'm joined by uh, Dmitry Maslenikov. He has a consulting company, runs, and he does. Uh, he's a longtime partner of InterSystems, and he's developed some of the stuff we're going to talk about. And what we're talking about is Iris Vector Search, and I'm going to go into a little bit of um, detail about the Python ecosystem that that most people develop. Gen AI applications in, and um, that makes it a very powerful kind of set of capabilities that anybody can take advantage of, and then also use their data in Iris. So this is the agenda. I'm going to talk about vector search. I'm going to talk about LangChain and the LangChain Iris adapter or driver, and the Llama Index and Llama Iris adapter. It's related. And we'll have a little uh, application uh, demo that uh, Dimitri's going to show us. OK, so what's vector search? Well, what's vector? So as you've seen in the keynotes, a lot about vector search. In fact, kind of a ginned up version of this diagram uh, was on the main stage today. But really, it's about <clears throat> vectors that are these long strings of numbers that are not random numbers. They actually represent a point in a very high dimensional space. And they're the output and the, the result of a specialized kind of large language model that's an embedding model. And these are, of course, like I mentioned, high, high dimensional arrays. And um, they capture the semantics. So you can see things that are similar in meaning will end up in similar parts of space. This is, uh, of course, just showing in three dimensions what is in reality a very complicated high dimensional space. But you can kind of think about it in these terms where you have kind of animals in one part of the space and you've got fruits and vegetables in another part of the space. And that helps you <clears throat> be able to um, do search and similarity search on those semantic elements uh, very quickly just using kind of nearest neighbors. So it turns complicated search process into just a simple geometric operation. So that makes it fast and useful for these kind of search applications where you really need to turn it around fast for a user query. However, um, they are definitely uh, challenging because they're a new type of data. We've added it within Iris as a data type within SQL. Uh, but then as you're dealing with all this data, whatever data it is, might be a bunch of documents, if those documents get updated, then you've got to update your vectors and uh, maintain that. So it can be challenging. So where it all started, at least, just kind of give a little bit of an idea of why it's really cool. This is a, a plot of, of uh, some output from word to vec which was the kind of initial language model that got everybody excited. And it was really just trained to predict missing text. So it's very easy to train in the sense that you have a pile of text and you just like blank out some words. And that's your training set. You, to, to, you figure out if it can detect what word is missing in the input. So you could use massive amounts of data. And then after you train it on all that data, when you, you can see these interesting geometric relationships. Now this is a PCA plot, so it's only two dimensions. But it's just showing like the capital, like from the country to its corresponding capital is simply a geometric translation in that space. So that got everybody excited that these models were not just capturing you know, specific individual items of meaning. It was really capturing some kind of relationship, a general relationship. Now fast forward, of course, with large language models, all these embedding models have gotten bigger. And there's actually this big uh, massive text embedding benchmark um, that's on Hugging Face and has all of these different types of embedding models that are all um, uh, and benchmarks that, that, that all the different <coughs> embedding models can be um, measured against. So it's a massive kind of field now. And as well, these embedding models can, can take in images, not just text. So it's, um, 
very interesting space. It's moving very quickly, and there's new embedding models all the time. You can take a small embedding model and fine tune it for your particular application. If you see that those vectors that you're getting back don't work very well, you can use a lot of the tools that you see um, and just fine tune it. And then how are you using this in an application? So this is just a kind of a, a busy slide, I understand, but it's the end result of, a, of an animation. But really, the vector database is kind of in the core. Let me see if this works. I don't know if I have a pointer. So anyways, <clears throat> as you see, start from the lower right hand. That's where you get your data from whatever data you might have, and you want to use it in an application that leverages Gen AI. You first have to do some chunking of that data, which is just splitting each document up into a small bit of text so that you get a chunk of meaning from that bit of text. And those go then through an embedding model. So you see that each one of those inputs, each one of those pieces of text will get turned into a vector in that blue and inserted into a vector database. And then when you want to do search or you have a query coming in from the top, you run the query through the embedding model, the same one, you get a similar a vector, and then you just do this nearest neighbor search. You see that red dot in the middle, you're looking at uh, elements that are close to it in space, and then get the corresponding chunks there in the yellow, and then you pass that into the prompt, and you say, you tell the LLM, answer this question, use this context, and if you don't, if you can't, <laughs> Don't answer, um, and that helps to reduce elimination or hallucinations. So <clears throat> that's the the kind of context in which you're going to use these vectors, and you're going to use vector search. Of course, now Iris is a vector database. There are a lot of vector databases out on the market. It's a kind of a niche, and we don't think of ourselves as a vector database. We're not a string database. We're not a float database. Uh, so we're a general database and we just have, like Merv Griffin said uh, earlier today, it's a feature, not a product. So that's uh, how we've developed it. And in 2024.1, something to be very clear about, this is an experimental feature. So vector search is experimental in 24.1. That was not mentioned on the main stage. But this is just an example of the kind of SQL that you can use. Um, you know, you have a vector data type, you say how big it is, or, you know, it's gonna come out of the model. Um, your embedding model is gonna be whatever uh, dimension. In this case, I'm just showing 200, but typically like the open AI embeddings, they're 1500 <coughs> uh, dimension. And then a, a similarity search is used as vector dot product. We also have vector cosine as the, um, the similarity search. And then events, and of course, oh yeah, early access program if you want to use it. It is released now, uh, but we're still keeping an early access program. Just if you have questions, you want to reach out and you have some suggestions to make it better, you can, uh, you can get in touch with us. But um, <clears throat> the other thing that we're going to be doing, and this is a forthcoming feature that's going to, that is available in this EAP, is an embedding kind of construct. So instead of dealing with vectors within SQL, you can just use uh, this new embedding capability. You specify the model that you want to use, and um, then when you do the search, you don't have to worry about actually embedding the query. We'll do that embedding for you with that embedding function, and, um, and then specify which, which, um, which embedding model or which um, embedding index you're using. So this just abstracts away all the use of vectors. You don't have to really think about them. We're going to handle that underneath. And also, if your data gets updated, we'll rerun the embedding. So that'll make it really simple for a lot of people to use it. In fact, we've used it internally. We have a bid management tool that we use. Um, and we used to use Similarity Search, which, was in, which is in Iris. But it uses a you know, keyword-based search. BM25 is the most common keyword search, and um, it will have problems with certain queries. But since you have semantic search, you have this embedding model that captures the semantics, makes it much more, uh, much better results that come back that actually capture this idea of like turnaround time. 
um, better than the other one. So that's already in use internally. We had a lot of demos that you saw last night, uh, demos and drinks using this already. So, so I think that people can and are using it. Uh, so the way that it is all built up, at least um, for us to use in, in applications, it, it's one thing to have a SQL capability. Not everybody uses SQL. And it doesn't really capture all the, the functionality you need to build a whole application. Python is a great place to do that. So <clears throat> starting from that vector data type and those similarity functions on top of that, we have SQL Alchemy, which is just a common kind of uh, way to access databases. We have a SQL Alchemy driver that is also community supported. And on top of that, we built a Langchain and Llama index uh, adapters, which I'm going to go into. And these are open source and available from PyPI, so it's very simple to install them. And we have a very simple um, repo that, that, that gives you some examples of how to, how to get going with it. So by putting all that together, it makes it really easy for anybody to get going. So to kind of summarize, uh, you know, the iris vector search kind of capabilities at the core, you have SDK access to these SIMD operations. So dollar vector is a data type in iris now. And if you want to program an object script and build some custom solution, we have, we give you access to all those uh, low level chipset accelerated um, operators. On top of that, we built the SQL and I showed you that syntax and then the integrations on top of it. So then on to Langchain. All right, so if you're building a Gen AI application, you'll probably run into Langchain somewhere. It's the most popular, um, it's the most popular library. It has uh, access to all the different models. It has a large kind of um, structure as far as modular design where it's built on kind of a chain format, which is pipelines underneath, and then everything is built on top of that. Access to models, access to retrieval engines, like vector databases, and then also tooling to make agents. So it's really comprehensive, and it really is kind of an interoperability framework for Gen AI applications. Um, and just down that little quote, empowers developers to build robust data-driven applications with modern language models. And these are just the, the kind of components that are there. All these get together and they're, they're, they're composed into chains, retrieval, large language models, you know, actual memory, because an, a chatbot needs to keep track of what it's done. Every time you call a large language model, it's a, it's a stateless call. You're just getting, you pass all the information that it needs in that one call, and so that information has to include the memory of what the, what the uh, application is keeping track of. And so managing all of that uh, with prompt templates and being able to put that together in agents is something that, that you, you kind of need a framework to do. And Langchain is a really good one. But there's also an ecosystem around it. So underneath, you know, just to do all of that stuff, to do the document management, ingesting documents, uh, indexing them, you need a bunch of uh, capabilities that are available, open source, Python. Also like Pydantic is used, which is a popular data validation framework. So that keeps uh, everything clean and able to be abstracted nicely in Python. And inside, of course, there's a large number of vendors that are actually submitting code to the Langchain repository, Google, OpenAI, and there's like hundreds of integrations uh, within the Langchain ecosystem. Oops. And then on top of it, then once you have that really great framework, then it's easy to build abstractions on top of it. So Crew AI is one of those. It's a um, multi-agent framework. So <laughs> it's been found that it really helps performance with these applications to kind of separate into smaller experts um, constructs that are like agents that have their own kind of thread with the large language model, keep track of their own memory, and focus on one part of, the, of a complex problem. So you can do some really complicated research uh, by having different uh, agents tackle different parts of that problem, communicate, collaborate together, um, and that is something that is enabled by these really great frameworks.
So highly encourage you to check that out. It's, uh, it's definitely where things are going in the application space. It's multi-agent applications. So what's Langchain Iris? So Langchain Iris is relatively simple. Okay, so it's just a vector store implementation within uh, that Langchain ecosystem that has a bunch of uh, vector stores that are uh, able to be addressed by Langchain. And so Iris is now one of them. And there's just basically three steps to it. You gotta prepare your data. And you can see some bit of kind of text um, processing there, uh, splitting up the, the text by character. Um, and then making embeddings object, which just basically specifies what embedding model you're gonna use. And in this case, we're using OpenAI embedding service, so it's gonna be calling out to OpenAI to make an, a, a vector each time. And then you actually load all that data, generate all those embeddings into the iris vector store in that load step. Just takes a connection string, essentially. And that collection name is, becomes a table in iris where the vectors are stored and metadata about, about those um, vectors is stored. And then querying, uh, it provide, uh, you know, it's this Python call to do similarity search. That's not doing the full rag thing, it's just doing semantic search over those vectors. Really simple. So, that was Langchain, and I'll talk about Llama Index. And Llama Index is another Python framework it's much more constrained than Langchain. It is focused really squarely on RAG and these augmented applications. So it has a lot of the same kinds of elements that Langchain has, but it's, as I said, just a little bit simpler and focused exactly on indexing data, querying that data, and integrating that with a large language model. It also has a framework for agents and also observability and evaluation is, um, is really important as well for application development. So really nice uh, framework and really fits within what we want to enable. It's, it's one of many though, um, and so these are not exhaustive, but a lot of things, like I said, in the ecosystem, they leverage these other frameworks. So it, there are often like Crew AI, it builds on top of Langchain. So if you have a Langchain connector, it can be used in a lot of different frameworks. Same goes for Llama Index. Similar kind of framework as far as the prepare, load, and query. Looks very similar. Uh, Dimitri can talk a little bit more about some of the differences between these in, in, his, um, in his demo. But uh, very interesting overall to be able to quickly get an application going with a very small amount of code. Another thing <clears throat> about, um, about the way these work is that you can take a bunch of documents from a, from a directory, or you can also just give it a SQL query. So if you're storing all your data in Iris, it's easy to just set up a database reader, and that will just load text directly from your database if you already have data in there. And then also, um, a thing about the metadata. Metadata is stored in one column, and we have JSON table as a nice um, new query function in Iris SQL that allows you to kind of dig into all that metadata and get it out at the SQL level for really kind of more advanced use cases. Okay, so that's that, and then I'll pass it over to Dimitri to uh, give a little demo. So uh, I'm going to dive into uh, how we actually start using both of these libraries, Llama, uh, Llama Index Iris and Langchain Iris. So how to actually create first of set of your vectors in it. So uh, first of all, I just download some data set, in this case, some clinical, uh, data set. Uh, I cut it uh, to 1,000 rows, so I already did it. I don't need to do it again. Uh, then first uh, example is Llama Iris. Uh, Llama Iris is a library for Llama Index. And uh, so it's very simple as uh, Tom already uh, described it. Uh, so this is Iris vector store from Llama Iris. We, uh, so 
Llama Index as well as Langchain offers multiple ways of how to get your data. Uh, in this case, I just using uh, JSON reader because my data set in JSON lines. Uh, it's possible uh, to load data from database, from uh, any, any source. Like, just look into a llama index uh, and it have many options. I'll just run all the cells and you will see it's working uh, pretty well. So uh, we got uh, data. Uh, I just printed uh, first 10 of them. Uh, connection string, uh, so as mentioned, uh, behind the scene of this library is used uh, SQL Alchemy. So we'll need uh, to put here SQL Alchemy URL to, uh, to connect to our database. So it's uh, iris uh, in all the username, password, host name, port and namespace where we going to connect. Then uh, we define our vector store uh, where we put our connection string, table name, which we wish uh, to use uh, where to store it, uh, and from documents, so where, where to get documents. So it, it, Lama Index uh, shows it uh, uh, with this progress bar, uh, very useful. So it parsing nodes, then generate embeddings. You saw it was quite fast, it, it was using uh, OpenAI, but uh, Sometimes you would not, don't need uh, to, don't want to use external services. I will show a different example on Lang chain, how you could use different uh, source for embeddings. So, uh, and uh, at this place, I just, uh, to show it uh, in one environment, I show uh, how, so we stored this in database in IRIS. Uh, so it's a text what we extracted from uh, the database uh, from this data set. And then uh, also uh, I just extracted only embeddings. You see all this bunch of numbers. It's very, 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 very long list uh, for each. So it's working. Uh, so then you, you can use Llama, ID, uh, Llama index uh, features to do whatever you want, uh, any application, because uh, Lama Index has so many features, as Tom already mentioned. Uh, let's go to length chain. So pretty simple, pretty uh, almost the same. So uh, just uh, import uh, our uh, what we needed. Uh, also, Iris vector from long chain Iris. In this case, we have also JSON loader. A bit different syntax, but it working the same. Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, OpenAI, it's external service. Uh, Sometimes we have uh, uh, sensitive data and we don't want to send them uh, to external service. We would like to use some service which we can use in our system, and in our environment, controllable by us. Uh, for this case, I, uh, as an example, I showing uh, all Llama embeddings, which running uh, right next to my iris in a Docker container. Uh, yeah, my machine not open eye. I don't have so much resources. So it taking a long time. And like, for instance, let's go to uh, all Llama logs and you can see uh, below, we have calls to API of Olama. Yeah, it takes very long time. So I ask it how many documents? Five documents. And in the, in this case, it calls uh, one by one to get embedded, but it takes long time uh, because yeah, my machine is very simple. Fortunately, it's not uh, Mac, uh, it's not Windows, uh, and you see I have a whole CPU, uh, 100%, if it would be Windows, would be too noisy. But okay, uh, so it finished it, uh, all documents, and yeah, again, so it, yeah, it took more than one minute uh, 
Oh. Here was 16 seconds, uh, but 4,000 documents with OpenAI. Uh, 10 documents uh, on my machine took uh, one minute. So. But the results the same. So also the same uh, text and we, uh, we see numbers. But remember that uh, you can't uh, mix models. You can't mix uh, different. If you generated embeddings with Olama, you can't use it uh, with the, then uh, trying to search uh, with embeddings from OpenAI because it's completely different models. You have to use a, a, the same model for uh, everything. So if you originally uh, created uh, all your vector storage by OpenAI and then trying to use uh, embeddings from Olama, it will not work. It will be just garbage. Uh, so that's why uh, you may see the number uh, do not match. It's just completely different. Uh, yeah, uh, so and as a uh, bonus uh, with uh, uh, using SQL Alchemy, uh, we can use uh, embedded Python mod. So as, as you saw there, uh, I used uh, network, uh, so I passed uh, a local host port and so on, so over the network. But uh, yeah, we have now Python embedded and we can use embedded mode. And in this ca case, it uses just very simple uh, URL, just embedded mode. Uh, and let's run all cells. And it will work the same, just it's different uh, UI a bit. This part takes a bit longer, but it should be, yeah, enough. We got documents, uh, generate embeddings. In this case, this uh, particular notebook running inside Iris container uh, next to Iris. So uh, previously I showed it on my machine it running. Now it's inside of Iris, so it has access uh, in uh, in, inside of Iris. Uh, and yeah, the uh, results the same. And uh, let's go to the Beaver. Let's refresh it. So we have all three tables generated here. Uh, so uh, those libraries have uh, uh, all columns just hard coded uh, for their needs, uh, for some uh, filtering, as uh, Tom already mentioned, uh, there is metadata column uh, where uh, some uh, in JSON format uh, stored some data. Uh, in let's see, so yeah, source from somewhere uh, with a document, it's where is our text embedding in some ID. Uh, the same uh, for Lama index, uh, they have a bit more data, but idea is the same. Uh, let's go to data, yeah. So ID, embedding, document, no. Data, yeah. Uh, text in this case, metadata, also JSON format, and some more IDs, and again embedding. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, Lama index supports, uh, so with Lama index, you can filter data uh, in metadata, but we don't support it yet. We'll, I hope we'll, we'll make it soon. Uh, so you will have even more features available in, uh, with uh, Lama index. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, uh, Lama index also has uh, Node.js support. We don't have yet. If you wish to use Lama index from Node.js, just let us know, maybe we will find solution how to make it happen as well. Uh, so yeah, right now it's available only on Python at the moment, but if you wish Node.js, okay. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it from me. I just remind you, this is the slide I showed before. Uh, it just has the, the key elements of uh, vector search. Um, but I would say that uh, it's a powerful new feature and it uses LLMs uh, very much uh, integrated within your data 
workflow with Iris. Uh, it's just a new data type. Uh, we're going to have this embeddings facility that's going to abstract a, a bunch of that away and make it very simple to set this up on data you have in Iris. It also, we're going to have an approximate nearest neighbors index that's going to make it scale to billions of vectors currently. It, we definitely top out at a few hundred thousand at most. And um, also, we talked about Langchain, Lama Iris, or Lama Index, how great they are. <laughs> they abstract a lot of these details away themselves and built an amazing ecosystem around it. And now, of course, Langchain Iris and Lama, and Lama Iris make it uh, Iris a great citizen within this ecosystem. And it should be apparent that it's easy to start and easy to get going. Already, we've basically shown. Uh, how you can get that data together into Iris and already be able to search it. So thanks very much. Any questions? Yeah, you can go to the man with the microphone if you have a question. I just had a question about um, will we be able to control the types of embeddings that we want to use in our uh, with our data, or will you be handling all of that? It's going to be configurable to whatever embedding model you want to use. So that embedding model could be a service like this OpenAI service, or a local model that gets downloaded from Hugging Face or whatever. It's just going to be. We already have this kind of set up as a as a configuration, so you can have multiple different configurations that you would use with that embeddings index at least. But for the Lama index and, and Langchain um, integrations, they're all configurable, exactly whatever model you wanna, like he was, like Demetri was showing, he had one running locally with Olama, that's one way to do it, um, or, or a service. So that's all under your control, it's just all a developer tool. And is it something that, do you have to then run something to apply the embeddings to your uh, your data? Like, does it need to be trained on your database or is it just running all the time? <clears throat> it just, it's just running. So um, yeah, once you have the, the model, whatever the embedding model you're gonna use, um, it just runs as part of the indexing. So if you have to do an indexing step like with uh, with Langchain or Llama, Llama Index, that's, that's a step that you do. It's not like you train, you don't have to train the model. Let's say if you wanted to fine tune a model an embedding model to make it work better on your particular data set, you would do that, then it's a new model that you would then import and use uh, within either Olama or, or however you do it. That's under your control. So okay. I'm a little confused because I thought a vector is a single dimensional array and yet you talk about multiple dimensions. Can you explain that? Um, each vector is a 1D array, of, well, it's, it's just like a, it is an array that's one, one dimensional array, but each element of that array is a dimension in the embedding space. It's, it's an array of floats, it's an array of numbers. It's really just a point in space. So if, if the embedding vector was two or three elements long, that would be two or three dimensions, and they would be points in two or three dimensional space. Typically, there are 1,500 dimensions, though, so it's a very complicated mathematical space. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, if there's no more questions, I guess we're done. Thank you so much. You can always reach out to me. And, of course, we want your feedback, so please go to the app and give us a shout-out.